One of the issues you're always going to run into, and this is where the companies like JBS and their retail system is price. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, people are still limited by what they can what they can afford to pay. Are you going to be? Is there a goal to be price competitive with some of these bigger places eventually? We already are. Um, through if you look at uh, in the beef industry right now, the one thing that we're fighting right now is shipping, of course. But they, we've already cut our shipping in half. And if you look and you you can change your consumption model to more. Uh, you know, meat-based, beef-based through somebody that is a peer-to-peer transaction, like through the Beef Initiative. If you look at the quality of your food and everybody needs to once again, put this into perspective, what is, what is expensive? Is it expensive to eat highly processed food and to eliminate nutritional protein out of your diet? Or is it basically more cost affordable to go ahead and change your consumption model into the best beef in the world to where you're not, your insurance costs go down, your health improves you're not spending so much money on these highly processed foods so as far as your consumption model and your pocketbook we are already competing with uh, uh let's say a pound of ground beef is just as the, it's the same price through the beef initiative as it is at kroger or it is at walmart and then okay let's look at what are we comparing are we comparing the same quality to quality no our quality of beef, and you know this, you eat the best beef in the world across, you know, everywhere you go, you're eating the best beef there is. There is no comparison as far as quality. And right now we are price competitive because the multinationals, you know, JBS just got uh, settled out of court this last year for $56 million for price manipulation during COVID. They can up the price. They can inflate the price anytime they want. They made $500 million of profit during that time. They settled out of court for 56 million. How are you going to be dependent on a a multinational uh, company that basically manipulates that price to where you, it turns into caviar through the supermarket? Right now, our beef is cost effective. It's cost affordable. And it's basically in line with the supermarket right now, which the the prices are being set by those multinationals. Yeah, there, uh, you know, and you mentioned because I got a fifty-six million dollars slap on the wrist and made five hundred million dollars on that, so it's it's a cost of doing business. It's, it's not going to dissuade them from continuing to do that. We see the same no. thing with the pharmaceutical industries. They get a billion dollar fine, but they made a hundred billion dollars, like a cost of doing business. Um, what you mentioned, it was a Texas Beef Initiative. Now it's a Beef Initiative. The goal is national and then global. What is it? What are, what are, are there any states that are like, is, do you, are you finding that some states are more amenable to this or is it, is it pretty easy in every state? Yeah, there's every state is going to have their own rules and regulations. You know, you look at the cattle industry and you look at the geography, you look at the demographics, you look at market access, the distribution. There's so much that goes into play within the beef industry itself. You know, Texas, all the way up to the Midwest, Kansas, Nebraska, and everything is going to be different than what you have out in California or maybe even Louisiana, Arkansas. But what I found out is with our model of being regenerative based, it's really about the same across this nation. There's tons of producers out there that do not have that voice. Ranchers out there, what the Beef Initiative is really doing and moving forward very powerfully is we're giving those ranchers a voice again. And by doing that, I think the biggest thing that people always are looking for these solutions and answers. Well, the solutions and the answers are everybody right here on this podcast. We have to change our consumer demand. That is by education and understanding that there is market access to these ranchers across the nation. Some of these states are going to have more restrictive processing rules. We do see that, yes. But once again, Texas is leading the way within processing. You go up to Wyoming, Montana, you know, some states that are big in hunting, you're going to have a little bit more liberal uh, laws that are basically give you better access to that. You know, it, it you have mobile processing centers, you have mid-level, you have butcheries. And what that requires to understand right here and right now is we, the consumer, have to change the consumer demand. We have to start with education and knowing where food comes from. And we have to give those people out there, those ranchers that have basically been, um, you know, they've been restricted as far as having a digital voice or a voice in their communities. 
we have to take action. We, the consumer, can't be complacent anymore because that's what got us here. That's what really complacency with the desire of all this convenience around food is why we're in this nutritional starvation in this health epidemic that we're facing right now. We have to put our foot down. We have to say no more. And then, you know, that's what the Beef Initiative is about. It's about a call to action. It's about taking intentional action to find out how you can build your community, that being your community, being yourself, the individual, your family, or everybody around you in your town, your city, or your county. Yeah, I certainly agree with the nutritional side. I mean, it's 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 shocking, and I just you know, I, I, we just got through an election, and some people are happy, some people are unhappy about the results. But what I just would like to say is that you vote every day with your pocketbook. You vote for who you want to be rich. Mm -hmm. You vote for who you want to be powerful by what you consume by what you what you put into your body and that's that's literally a vote you cast every single day and so this is something how you can you can definitely change things um so let me ask you this because you know some people say hey I, i'm feeling like i don't know i'm feeling like a, a you know i want to i want a prime rib for dinner tonight i know i can go to the store dry down wherever and i can buy one or i can buy a set of ribeyes and, and you know it's sometimes spur of the moment how are you going to how do you deal with that? I mean, I mean, obviously, if you got it stocked in your freezer, but let's say you run out. I ran out of ribeyes. I got nothing in my freezer, and I'm feeling like that. How do I? How does a Texas Beef Initiative or the Beef Initiative deal with that? I guess you got a plan ahead of time, or what's what's the thought on that? Well, and, and that is a good question. Once again, we're shifting right here. We're shifting trains of thought. We're shifting our behaviors. We're shifting our lifestyles. I tell everybody out there. I said the Beef Initiative is international lifestyle that you don't understand yet. And what we do is we become more intentional about sourcing our food. We make our food more of a lifestyle based on true nutritional survival instead of a form of convenience where we can go into a drive up and get our fix. Food is a drug now, highly processed foods. We know this. There's a global industrial food shift happening right now that a lot of people do not understand that it's coming our way. They're going to basically put a prohibition against this pure animal protein. So by saying that, if you know that you have market access to something like the Beef Initiative or, or one of the hundred producers, ranchers in the Beef Initiative, then yes, you plan. You don't go out there and just say, hey, I'm going to go get a Big Mac or treat a ribeye like a Big Mac. You treat a ribeye like it's something that is actually very valuable, that's very intentional, and that you actually design your life and your lifestyle around. If that takes a change of behavior, we'll step up. You know, you have all the education out there. You have the market access. You have the means to do this. And I, everybody's busy. You know, everybody, we're not discounting people's lives, especially in these days and times. But I guarantee you, since uh, May, I've driven 33,000 miles across this country, and I've eaten a ribeye every day of my life that I wanted to. So it really is about that intentionality. And it's making that 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 promise with yourself, that sacred promise with yourself. It's like, hey, I'm going to create a legacy within my own family about this is how my family is going to eat for generations to come and establish that trademark within your name and within the belief system of your family and say, this is how we're going to start sourcing food. This was stolen from us. This is how we're going to respect our ancestors. They fought hard for us to have this type of beef in the United States, and we're going to come and we're going to take it back.